You know, I did that the other day too. It wasn't this week, but what last week I went to Wally's and I done some stuff with the tractor over there and I was coming back and I promised Brother Houston I'd stop doing some stuff with him with the tractor. And I was out there and a little rabbit shot off and uh, we used to catch them things all the time when it's farming. You know, you did some field was the perfect time to catch them because you had a wide space that was already, you know, uh, distant up and this side of it. So if he took off this way, you could just keep pace with him, you know, and you couldn't catch him, but he would wear down and then you could catch him. The only thing you had to worry about was stepping on him, you know, because uh, they don't stop on a dime. But I took off out over here at Houston's and I jumped out of the tractor like I used to do. And then I, I, when my foot landed flat on that ground, I thought my back drove him on into the ground with it. Uh, I didn't catch the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> he ran about 15 steps and looked back at me and laughed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at uh, the Bible tonight. Uh, like I said, we read this this morning, but we're going to read it again. Uh, in verse 2 it says, Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And uh, we talked this morning, it was, uh, you know, once again relating to a priest. And uh, also, priests have sins. Amen? Amen. Priests have, uh, have, uh, have their problems, and it, it refers to that. But that just, it has just captivated me that out of the way. And I, you know, when I started this morning, that wasn't even part of my sermon and that's one of the things that got me sidetracked this morning is I, I caught a wind of that with the spirit and, and I wanted to get in that and I and I and I, and I started in a little bit but I but I pulled back but God had laced more things on my mind in verse two but we talk about being out of the way. Uh, he gives us two things there that that, that he he talks about he talks about being of course ignorant and out of the way and and once again, out of the way is, is more or less misguided is what he's talking about here. Mis, misled or, or misguided. And, and uh, so you can take a, a, a person, a believer that who is, is uh, having problems with knowledge and understanding and also can be misguided. So and that's what we're referring to. But it just gives me so much of a, a jump start on what I want to preach on him. This right here. When we see this right here, and, and he talks about having compassion on the ignorant and on those that are out of the way. And when you just take that out of the way, and as I preached it this morning, as the Spirit was leading me to say, you know what, we need to be in the way. Christians need to be in the way. A lot of, a lot of times we're found where we've been pushed out of the way. And uh, I didn't touch on it very much, but as I went home and I and I laid down in my recliner and, and started thinking. I said, you know what? I, there's so much more there that needs to just be mentioned. I'm not going to tell you nothing tonight you don't already know. But I'm going to bring it into remembrance. I'm going to bring it back to where we need to think about it tonight anyway. I guarantee you, it, it, when we bring it up, you'll know it's right. You'll know what I tell you tonight is right just by what God has already taught you. But we have so many places in our life that God has, replaced, has placed us responsible for. I think back, these kids, and I heard Brother Wally say uh, back in our class something about his kids and that God, and you know, those kids belong to God. And you've got to agree to that. You've got to agree that the kids that, that, that we have, and I... <laughs> And hey, your granddaughter can't get no cuter, right, amen? Boy, she just up here dancing this morning. Did you see her dancing up here? I tell you what, the kids that God gives us and, and places us responsible of, oh, what a blessing, amen? Man, I love my kids. I love the kids that God has given. I know I couldn't do nothing like that, but I know that God has done it. And God has, has, has done it and blessed Kara and I with those kids and says, I have placed you responsible over those kids. And man, that's a big thing. You know, when we do an ordination, a lot of times that parents don't know that ordination is not for the baby. You know that? It, it really has nothing to do with the baby. 
I'm going to put a little oil on that baby's head. All it's going to do is need to be washed off. That's it. It's not going to do anything. The baby's not going to, by me praying over that baby, that baby's not going to have some kind of magical thing from now on that it ain't never going to have no problems. The ordination is about the parents. It's about uh, committing to God that God, I, I admit today that you have given me this child and I'm going to agree to raise him according to your way. God ordained me to raise this child. Mm -hmm. The child's not going to raise itself. Now we take it and we look at that tonight and I think about some of the things that, that have been, some parents that have come to me and I think, oh man, where are we at? I had, a, I had a lady come to me just this day, this day, and say, oh, I need you to pray for me, preacher. I need you to pray for me. I can't get, I can't get my child to, to listen to me. I can't get my child to quit hanging around with so and so. And I, I'm thinking, what? How come? I don't know. Parents won't be parents no more. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like when parents decide that they're just going to be friends. Today we see that so many times that parents, when the, their kids start getting teenagers and, 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 and 13, 14, 15, they, they start wanting to be buddies. Well, I want to be everybody's buddy, but God has ordained me, put me responsible over that child's life. That's big. Late told me, I just can't, I can't get her to quit smoking. I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't get people to quit. By, I, what? Well, lady, don't, don't look at me. I just don't understand. Somebody needs to get in the way. We're so worried about hurting our kids' feelings and not want, not they're not wanting to be our buddies that we won't get in their way of this. Yeah. Nobody else is going to get in the way but us. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to say, my kid is not going to do this. My kid is not going to go there. My kid's not going to hang around with this person or these people or this kind of crap. Yeah. Why can I say that? Because God gave me the right. Mm -hmm. It's a great honor to have the right to bear arms. It's a great honor to have the, the freedom of speech. But it's a, even a greater honor given to me to by God to raise my kids. According to His Word. Amen. Just get in the way. We have let <laughs> HRS and REG and, and CTT push us out of the way. I believe we should be in the way. Boy, we should love our kids and our grandkids enough. Boy, I'm gonna tell you something right now, and I, I just don't know. I don't know. I know that I can go to my granddaddy's house, and I'm 35 years old. My granddaddy's house now, and him know I'm doing something wrong, and he ain't gonna sit down and talk to me like my buddy. 